For the lead compensator, as you remember, it's a high-pass filter and it works via a moving phase of response. So the idea is that uh, we're going to actually alter the phase of the response. In other words, it helps take care of the, the angle deficiency in our system, remember from the root locus stuff. And really, it's used for improving stability margins, if, if you remember with your phase margin and gain margins. It's also good for increasing the bandwidth and reducing the settling time of your system. Now, one of the problems with the lead compensator is uh, the one that's designed using a frequency response technique is it requires additional increase in gain to offset attenuation. And that can increase the cost of the controller because the amplitude of the signals produced by the controller uh, it needs to be, need to be larger. And generally speaking, the cost of any kind of amplifier is roughly proportional to the amplitude of the signal that is, is, needed, uh, is needed from it. So as a consequence, then, it may generate very large signals depending on the arrangements that you have for your controller. And so you might have problems with saturation and high frequency noise. What I mean by this is, is that at, at high frequencies, you can have uh, noise that might creep in from various places like radio and all of that. And if you have a large amplifier, amplifying circuit in your lead compensator, that can be amplified and actually show up in the response of your overall system. Now, we go back and we look and write the lead compensator in this, in, in this uh, actually form like we did before with the other example. And, it's, and this is called actually time constant form, right, where we have instead of like S plus A, for example, instead of S plus A, we actually have S over A plus 1 is shown here, where it's normalized then we uh, can get away with actually trying to find omega and t, and it's slightly more convenient um, when we're looking at Bode plots, because these have, the omega at least has a real meaning. The phase angle of this compensator, we would say, is, is uh, the arctangent of omega t on the top, because of the imaginary part here, minus the arctangent of beta omega t, because of the imaginary term here as well. And so if we, we look at what the maximum a phase shift uh, that is generated by this en entire system, we actually could determine that by taking the derivative of this equation with respect to omega and look at where its derivative is equal to zero. And if we did that and then calculated where that is, is for omega, we actually get the maximum uh, to be at 1 over t square root of beta. So this is actually the maximum phase lead produced by this compensator. It's at this location. The actual value of the phase, how much the phase is shifted uh, at this particular value of the frequency, is given by phi max. And so if you substitute this back into this equation, or that equation, for example, and then calculate what that's going to be, it's actually the arc sine of 1 minus beta divided by 1 plus beta. So what we have with these two, two, two equations here is where the lead compensator is delivering its maximum change of phase, or if you will, like the correct correction for the angle deficiency, and then what that correction for the angle deficiency or that, that change in the phase really is. The gain is also changed as a consequence of putting lead compensator in there, and that value that is changed at this specific frequency, omega max, is given by 1 over square root of beta. So if we look at what we've got here, here's omega max, okay, this is our lead compensator, notice that the phase is caused to, to lead the original input. Here you see how it's positive. And so our maximum phase lead is nearly 20 degrees for the particular arrangements we had earlier before. But it always looks, looks more or less like this. And the magnitude goes from an attenuated minus 6 dB up to 0 dB, which is basically giving out what it is giving, uh, being provided with. And there is um, uh, the minus 3 dB point here at omega max. So gain GC is given by at this point, and then our maximum phase lead is phi max, and this, this particular frequency is omega max. And this is, these are the, this is the plot taken from these, and it shows you what different kind of behavior you would get if you use different values of beta. And, and this is plot with respect to omega t on the horizontal axis. So what's the idea? Well, let me give you a cookbook method for actually designing a lead controller that actually will take care of everything for you. you. You can adjust the gain of an uncompensated system to meet the steady state error requirements, if there are any. 
And a lead controller in particular doesn't particularly affect the steady state error in and of itself. So you, what you do is you, you basically the idea is you fix the steady state error first. All right. And you do this by adjusting the gain. And then you plot the Bode diagram for the gain compensated system. The gain compensated system, all right? So you fixed the steady state error already without the lead controller. And then once you've done that, you determine the gain compensated system gain and the phase margins. Once you have the, the gain and phase margins for your system, you look at the phase margin. Whatever it is that you have, so this is the phase margin and gain margin that you have, okay? And then try to figure out what you need. And these are both associated with the transient behavior, all right? So you have certain transient behavior, and you need certain transient behavior. Look at the difference between the two. And you need this all in terms of phase margin. The difference between the plant's phase margin and the required phase margin is almost the difference angle the compensator must deliver. All right. Remember back when we talked about angle deficiency? Well, this, this is sort of like the angle deficiency from, from lecture three sort of like that. All right. So if we have that as phi max, then we can go back and look and find what beta must be to achieve this phase margin. Remember that we got a we have an equation between phi max and beta. So, all right, if we got beta, then we're nearly done actually. Um, the trick is is that we given the nature of how this lead controller works, we actually have to fudge it a bit. So, the idea is that we've got Phase margin that is what we want minus the phase margin of what we have. And then we're going to add in 10 degrees. Why? It's because when we put in the lead compensator, the frequency where this phase margin should be measured will shift. That's a shift because not only does the lead compensator affect the phase, it also affects the gain. And so this helps take that into account. And this is really, all it is, is just a simple fudge. And only the final simulation will tell you if this is OK or not. So you have to just check and make sure. But usually, it's not bad. OK, so anyway, if we do that, if we find beta, then we look for the lead compensator's magnitude at the maximum phase. So remember, when we've already taken it into account, all the all the gain that we need, we don't need to be fooling with the gain anymore, right? The lead compensator, only thing its only goal in life is to change the phase. It does not need to change the, the gain because we we've changed the gain already by changing uh, by changing the gain in, of our original system. At any rate, what's the lead compensator's magnitude at the maximum phase? Well, we know it. We we found it. It's one over square root of beta. Now we need the frequency of omega max. I mean, we found where this beta value is. We found uh, the lead compensator's maximum magnitude at this maximum phase, phi max. We know what phi max needs to be. We just don't know what the frequency is. Now we can find it because we know beta and we know phi max. We can get it from our equation. And then that tells us where we should place our compensator's phi max. So remember, we want to shift the phase, but not the gain. We've already fixed the gain with, the, with our gain compensation for the steady state error in the first step. So we'll, we, in other words, what we want to do is move the closed loop poles, but not the steady state error. So we need a 0 dB crossover at omega max. Well, to do that, then we need to have the gain compensated plant give us actually a point where the 20 log 10 g of j omega all right, is equal to minus 20 log 10 of g compensated j omega. So the idea is is that this this compensator is going to have a gain that it's going to put in to the system. We need to actually get rid of that with the original plant that's had that's already been compensated. So we need to look for a place where we can cancel out this gain that's going to be stuck in by the lead compensator. That's where omega max is going to be at. Then once we have that, finally, then we can get the value of t, and we've, we're done, basically. We've got all the terms for our compensator. It sets our pole in zero, and we're fixed up. All you need to do then is to check the transit behavior of the 
of the planet G with the compensator G sub C to confirm it. So let's look at our previous system. This is G with 100 K divided by our three poles at uh, the origin, uh, minus 36 and minus 100. And we're required, okay, uh, to obtain a percentage overshoot of 20% with a peak response time of 0.1 second and static velocity error constant of 40. So our percentage overshoot gives of uh, 20% gives us a damping coefficient of 0.456. And so we're set here with what we what we need. So this is our uh, our need. And then we'll figure out in a bit what we have from this from this arrangement. But you remember step one, we have to actually worry about the, the steady state error requirements. Since it's a a type 1 system, we'll worry about the velocity error. That's why I'm actually worried about the velocity error in the first place. So we go through and calculate what that is. Um, the velocity the, the velocity error that we want is 40. And then we go through and we look, well, we've got a gain uh, unknown value of k in here. And the limit is s goes to 0 of s times g. And the limit is s goes to 0 of 100k divided by s plus 36 uh, times s plus 100. So that's k divided by 36. Cancel out the 100s here, right? So k then ends up being 1,440. So then, well, here's your k that goes back into the original plant. To fix up our steady state velocity error requirements, to take care of our steady state error, we need this gain to be set to this. So our k needs to be 1440. All right, so we've got our system set up. This is our uh, original system, all right, but this is our a uh, body plot of a gain compensated plant G is 144,000 divided by S, S plus 36, S plus 100, as shown here. Got our from minus 90 to minus 270 because of the three poles. And then you'll notice that the, the magnitude actually crosses zero over here somewhere uh, between uh, 10 radians per second and 100 radians per second. If we look at what our gain margins and phase, phase margins are, they're actually 34 degrees for a phase, mar phase margin, I should say, and the gain margin is 11 dB. Now, if we look for a phase margin that we need for a transient response, remember we needed a zeta of 0.456. Well, if you've got the damping coefficient, you've got the phase margin through this equation, the arctangent of 2 zeta divided by the square root of minus 2 zeta squared plus the square root of 1 plus 4 zeta to the fourth power. That's 48.15 degrees. That's the phase margin needed for the transient response, almost. All right. So we need to actually have this up here to get our phase margin. But remember, we need to add onto that an extra 10 degrees as the fudge factor. So this part here, that's what we need. And the plant phase margin, well, that's what we have. Remember, what we need to do is phase of what we need minus phase, I should say, let me do this, phase margin that we need minus the phase margin that we have. And we're going to add in 10 degrees. And that's what, we, that's what we're going to have to have for our phi max for our controller. That's a Vmax for the controller. So the, what we end up with then is what we, what we if we write this out, then we've got 58, 58, uh, 48, uh, shoot, 48 degrees. 48 degrees is what we need. We add in 10 degrees. And then we subtract off 34 degrees for what we have, and that gives us 24 degrees for uh, our phi max. That's what we have to have delivered by the compensator. Okay, so there it is. I have a phase margin of 34 degrees, and so the difference between the two is 24 degrees. That's our phi max. Now then, from beta, if we have a phi max of 24 degrees, we use this equation here that phi max is equal to the arc sine of 1 minus beta divided by 1 plus beta. And the best way I've found to actually do this is you guess a beta, find a phi, guess a beta, find a phi, guess a beta, find a phi, until you get to beta, it's 0.422, and it gets pretty close to 24 degrees. We've got the beta now, and we've got our phi max, but then we're going to go back and look and see what the gain is that actually causes, uh, that is actually caused by this compensator. 
for this particular set of uh, beta and phi. And, and that gain that is delivered by the compensator at this particular maximum value is 1 over square root of beta, and that's 3.76 dV, or 1.54 uh, for our system. Now, with all of this, it's kind of counterintuitive, but we get all of this results, but we don't know where it's happening yet. Finally, we can find omega max. It will be where the gain compensated plant has a gain of minus 3.76 dB. Remember, we're going to have, we had the original plant, and this thing was, was gain compensated. So then now we're going to put in the compensator, and then it's also going to put in extra gain. That is actually this value here, this GC of J omega max. Well, we don't want that part because we've already fixed the gain. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to say, we're going to look for a place where we can stick this in such that it cancels out with the gain of the original system. So we go back and look. Here's minus 3.76 dV. And so because we know, what the, we know that we're going to have a gain of 3.76 dV stuck in by this system, so we look for where that'll cancel out. That's minus 3.76 dV. That's about, uh, well, that's about 39 radians per second. And so then that tells us, you know, if we put the, the gain compensator or the compensator in here, the lead compensator in here, then it'll cancel out. It'll put our, our gain to be zero, and then we'll get exactly what we want. So that sets our omega max. And we have to do that from looking at the Bode plot. So then if we've got that, then we have omega max, we have beta, we don't have T in the original lead controller. And from that, we can find T from this equation. So our T then is 0 0.0395, and that sets our system with the gain out front. That's 2.38 times uh, S plus 25.3 for our zero, and S plus 60.2 for our pole. So this is our system. You notice that the gain has gone up quite a bit, uh, 2.38 times, and we have our, our zero and a pole here, and these are the poles from the original system. If we look at how things have turned out, the, the steady state error, uh, the definition here that we've used for KV, at least, uh, has, hasn't changed, and that's because we've, we've been careful in actually setting with the lead compensated value and canceling out the, the gain that would have been contributed in by the lead compensator. And if we look at the phase margin, well, it's not bad. It's pretty close to what we wanted, but not quite. That's because this fudge factor of 10 degrees is just that. It's just a fudge factor. You can do better if you want, but you know your mileage may vary. Anyway, the phase margin, well, it goes from 29.6 to 39 radians per second. That's, that's uh, what we actually have moved it to. And our closed loop bandwidth has gone up to nearly 70 radians per second from what it was before. Um, and we don't have to worry about too much, but the percent overshoot, you notice that the percent overshoot has gone down to 22.6% from 37%, and, and we were looking for 20%. Again, because of the fudge factor, then, well, we, we're going to get close, but we may not hit it exactly. Peak time, um, it's gone down to 0 0.075 second, which is really good. Okay, so there's our results. This is uh, the lead compensated, or the gain compensated system. And then this is the system after we've put the lead controller in there. If you notice that we have a much larger overshoot and it's fairly oscillatory, and notice that our, our units here have changed a bit. I'm sorry about that. It's actually quicker than it was before. Uh, you notice that it's already uh, it's already on its way back down at 0.1 second, whereas before it was still trying to reach the peak value at 0.1 second. So it looks like that all, all around that the response is, is, is more squarish with the, with the lead controller in there and, and probably superior. This is the, the root locus plot that we had before. These, are the, these dot, these squares represent where the closed loop poles are at with the gain compensated system. And then this is with the gain compensated system and the, and the lead controller popped in here. Notice that it's XO, so it's lead. And you can see where the the closed loop poles are at. Notice you got an extra one closed loop pole just popped in because of the lead controller. Try it for yourself. This is a lead compensator uh, via this frequency response method and 300,000 divided by S, S plus 50, S plus 120. 
And what you're looking for is an overshoot percentage of 20%. Uh, and you can also try with the settling time of 0.2 seconds and uh, see which one of those values actually is more restrictive. And then look for your steady state error based on K sub V. Notice we have one pole at the origin, so it's this type 1 system, so you need to look at the velocity error constant of 50. And if you can read upside down, there's the result.